in this uh, session let's use uh, uh, the non parametric uh, approaches to calculate the value at risk as we have already uh, discussed uh, earlier the non parametric approaches do not require any assumption of a statistical distribution of the data right even if uh, the data does not follow any specific uh, statistical distribution like normal or log normal we can very well use the non parametric approaches to compute the value at risk so we will uh, look at uh, some of uh, such kind of uh, approaches which can be used to compute the value at risk all right one of uh, such approaches for us is nothing but it's a bootstrapping of the historical simulation historical simulation is nothing but we pull out the values uh, from the historical data arrange them in the ascending uh, order and we uh, pull out uh, the n plus alpha into n plus 1th element this is what we have uh, looked at earlier so when i'm uh, looking at uh, the bootstrapping in that all i would be uh, doing is from that list of possible values let's say these are the possible uh, values on a random basis i will pull out some some number of elements so i am drawing a sample of data from the original data set and i am computing the var for that sample okay i'll draw a sample of uh, 100 so how do i uh, draw a sample i'll uh, actually uh, take some uh, random numbers uh, probably i'll uh, take the random numbers between uh, let's say 3 and uh, 250 those is where our calculations are so these are uh, probably a uh, 100 random numbers that i'm going to take all right these are the 100 uh, numbers which i am going to take and probably uh, corresponding to these uh, 100 numbers i will try to uh, pull out the returns values i will take the index of in this particular array i will pull out this value so these are the 100 uh, returns that are pulled out corresponding to the 100 random numbers and uh, let's say i will try to uh, find out uh, the minimum value in all these cases all right so i'll say the minimum value because i have taken 100 the 1% var is nothing but the first element the first element divides the data uh, 99% and uh, 1% to the other side so probably uh, i am uh, saying the minimum value is around 2.518% so that is my 1% var but if i repeat the same experiment again i am getting 3.77% if i repeat it again i am getting 4.08% if i repeat it again 4.08 again 3.77 but this time 1.79 so what is happening is many number of times if i am repeating the same experiment this is the process which is called as a bootstrapping from the original data set i pull out a subset of the data on a random basis and uh, from that subset of the data compute the var so out of the 250 uh, original data set all i have taken is i have taken a, a sample size of 100 on a random basis i am pulling some 100 values from the original uh, data set and uh, wherever i am seeing uh, that uh, the uh, and i am trying to find out the 1% uh, daily var how do i find out the 1% daily var it's as good as i am arranging uh, the data in the ascending order and probably uh, pulling out uh, the one percentage of the value that separates the data from the rest of it so that is actually uh, creating a uh, Uh, giving me a solution saying one uh, percent is out of hundred is nothing but the first element. So the minimum most value is what I am trying to compute. 
and in different instances i am getting a different uh, value 2.09 4.08 3.77 3.45 again 3.77 2.85 so from this particular list i am getting a different set of minimum values now what this bootstrapping method is, says is you repeat this experiment n number of times like this and for each experiment that is repeated compute the var based on that uh, small sample and average all those vars average all those vars and that would be the best estimate for the entire data you don't need to find out uh, the the distribution no need to find out the distribution of the underlying data no need to find out the mean standard deviation anything first compute the var for each experiment separately and uh, probably repeat it let's say 1000 or 10000 times you repeat the same experiment and uh, simply take an average of all those uh, vars which ever have come out and mention that that is the best estimate uh, var in this uh, best estimate 1% var for our data the same logic you can use for the calculation of expected shortfall also the same way you have uh, used the var you can uh, find out uh, the var for not only 1% you can take for 2% 3% so which is nothing but uh, all these uh, probably instead of minimum you can take second minimum third minimum the fourth the smallest fifth the smallest kind of values which would be uh, corresponding uh, to uh, the five different uh, uh, vars 95% 96% confidence 97% confidence kind of vars apply a weighted average and compute the expected shortfall again repeat the same experiment n number of times you will get n different expected shortfalls take a plain average of those uh, of those n number of uh, uh, repetitions and that is what will give you the final expected uh, shortfall that is what is a bootstrapping uh, approach so we are doing the historical simulation only but from the original data set if i am not bootstrapping it what happens i take the entire data set at once arrange the data in the ascending order and i am pulling out uh, 1% or 5% of the values whereas when i am doing the bootstrapping i am repeating the same experiment uh, n number of times and based on that pulling out the values and based on that trying to do some kind of uh, averaging on those values and arriving at my value at risk or expected uh, shortfall so rather than uh, working on one set of raw data alone this mechanism is a much better replacement uh, to compute your value at risk right so this is uh, typically the bootstrapping uh, of the historical simulation approach to compute your value at risk all right now let's uh, move on uh, to a non parametric density estimation mechanism in in a way we have actually uh, used it earlier also let's say right now in my sample i have pulled out 100 elements right i have pulled out uh, 100 elements and i am trying to uh, find out 1% var by identifying by identifying the first element in the ascending order but let's say uh, like in uh, our, uh, our earlier uh, chapter my data is having 250 elements so 1% var is nothing but 2.5th element right directly i cannot pull out the value corresponding to the second or to the third this is where a non parametric density estimation mechanism will actually work which is nothing but the traditional var approach will actually have to pull out either the second or the third item and say that this is the var so if at all i have to uh, find out uh, let's say the 95.5th element or even uh, out of 250 elements 
or probably even if I have taken 100 uh, elements as a sample itself, if I want 95.5% VAR, which is nothing but the 4.5% uh, daily VAR, I may have to, I may not have the data corresponding to it. So that is where I will go with the non-parametric density estimation method where I will find out the 95% VAR as well as 96% VAR and try to find the interpolation between the two. So I will try to join, okay, the 95% VAR is something like this, the 96% VAR is something like this. So if I want the 95.5, probably I can use a linear kind of an approximation between the two and that is what we are calling as non-parametric uh, density estimation method wherein I can use a linear kind of uh, estimation between the two points but yeah probably if I can uh, identify uh, uh, a curve based equation I can even uh, join the points uh, through a curve and try to uh, estimate the value corresponding uh, 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 to the uh, uh, to the value which is in uh, the middle between uh, the two or is 95 percent and 96 percent if i want 95.5 percent var probably i can look at uh, a curve kind of thing between these two and try to uh, identify my 95.5 percent uh, point also or simply the straight line approach is the much better approach to identify that kind of a scenario and what we are uh, simply saying is that is what we are calling as a non-parametric uh, density estimation uh, mechanism which can uh, actually help us to find out the VAR even at uh, the points where the actual value cannot be uh, identified uh, because of non being uh, an integer kind of scenario. So either I use the straight line which is more easier or probably if I can come out with a curvilinear equation, uh, curve kind of an equation, I can very well work out on the same. Then the other set of uh, simulation approaches, historical simulation approaches uh, that are being considered are slightly non-traditional wherein we talk about instead of equal weightage historical simulation approaches we are talking about weighted historical simulation approach because in a typical uh, equal in a typical traditional historical simulation we have arranged the data in the ascending order and then pulled out the 5% or 1% element and we have called it as the var Probably the smallest value was occurring almost 200 days back. I, how can I say that that particular value is the VAR even as of today? So, instead of taking the data as it is and giving equal weightage to all the data in the computation of VAR, we are talking about give different kinds of weightages based on uh, different uh, criteria and then use that information for the computation of VAR. From that dimension, we are introduced to four different kinds of weighing mechanisms for the VAR. I can go with age-based age weighing mechanism or a volatility-based weighing mechanism correlation based weighing mechanism or a filtered approach. We will talk about uh, these four kind of uh, approaches to, uh, in order to give the weights to the returns and thus compute the VAR involved in the process. Okay, so let's start with uh, the age weighted historical uh, simulation. So what this uh, says is to each of these okay so you have these are the returns now what it is saying is to each of these returns give a different weightage and let that weightage be based on this lambda factor this is the kind of a decay factor so probably the recent observation if the recent uh, observation if it is uh, given 
uh, if it has taken in full right the recent uh, sorry the recent observation if it is uh, taken in uh, full the next uh, yesterday's observation uh, it will be uh, taken as a weight of lambda given to it so if the recent observation uh, let's say uh, if the recent observation is given a weightage of 1 yesterday's would be given lambda day before yesterday's would be given lambda squared the day before yesterday's would be given lambda cube and so on so the overall uh, weightages would have been 1 plus lambda plus lambda squared plus lambda cube plus so on probably if I am considering n days it would have been lambda per n minus 1 as the weightage now the sum of all these uh, weightages and what is the sum of all these uh, weightages probably a sum to uh, n terms sum of n terms of a geometric progression 1 minus lambda per n here the terms are n terms 1 minus lambda per n minus 1 mi by 1 minus lambda this is the summation of all these numbers right because lambda is lesser than 1 this is the summation of all these numbers so if I am talking about the weightage to the first or the latest day it is nothing but 1 divided by 1 minus lambda per n by 1 minus lambda which works out to 1 minus lambda by 1 minus lambda per n whereas uh, when we are talking about the second day's weightage it becomes uh, lambda into this part 1 minus lambda by 1 minus lambda per n so third day lambda square into this the fourth day lambda cube into this so the nth day is lambda per n minus 1 or kth day is lambda per k minus 1 into 1 minus lambda by 1 minus lambda power n these are what are the weightages that I am going to give to each of the days <coughs> right these are what are the weightages that are going to be given to each of the days and wherever the 5% is going to come out that is what I am going to decide as the var 1% var or 5% var corresponding to this age weighted historical simulation approach so how do I do that ok so I will uh, find out that the age of all these things what is the age of this particular uh, date the that is the oldest right that is the oldest so probably I will go with it as I will take the counting of all these values so that is the age of that and uh, each one of them probably I will subtract it by one so this is 248 days old this is so like that the last one being the latest so this is 249 days old so probably uh, the weightage to this so let me assume that the lambda factor is let's say around 0.94 I'll, uh, we can modify on that so this would go as lambda power k minus 1 the weightage here to each of these days I will take it as lambda to the power k minus 1 alright multiplied by 1 minus lambda by 1 minus lambda to the power n so 1 minus lambda divided by 1 minus lambda to the power n 249 right so this is the kind of weightage that this day is carrying this is the kind of weightage each of these uh, days are typically carrying so probably uh, I could see 
that this day is carrying a weightage of 0 0.06 right so these are the weightages now probably what i can very well do is i will try to identify the minimum most uh, or the smallest uh, value in this particular uh, date so because the summation of all these things is nothing but one so what i can uh, very well uh, do is i can identify based on these weightages what is the value that is corresponding to the five percent the lowest kind of value it's as simple as that so probably i'll uh, find out uh, the smallest uh, or probably we'll try out uh, for the one percent to start with i can uh, find out the smallest out of these uh, returns and the weightage corresponding to that so these are the smallest so corresponding to these days i can find out the weightages if these days are very very old kind of days which don't have any kind of an impact on the recent probably i should not give more weightage uh, to them in terms of computation of my var so what i will do is corresponding to that probably i'll uh, use some function probably it's not of uh, much need for us right so what i'll uh, do is i'll try to get out of this list i'll try to get or uh, the weightages corresponding to each one of them okay i'll try to get uh, okay this one is uh, having let me uh, find out uh, the weightages so this is having a 0.05% and something like that so what i can uh, do is i can do it on a cumulative basis right wherever i am touching the 1% mark okay so i'll continue this and wherever the 1% mark is coming up so probably this is where the 1% uh, mark has come out so or probably i can do the interpolation between the two this is where the 1% mark has come out so i can say based on this age weighted simulation uh, approach the 1% var right now has to be around 2.02% or probably uh, do some kind of an interpolation between the two and say that the 1% var should be somewhere around this whereas a 5% var the same uh, logic if i extend a little bit i'll try out where the five percent comes right i will uh, check out where the five percent actually is uh, coming out yeah and probably i uh, say around 1.29 percent or around 1.3 percent will be equivalent to my five percent var this is the way using the age weighted simulation all we are doing is make things more simple <coughs> instead of treating all the historical days in the same manner i am giving a weightage to each of these days the recent day is having more weightage and the oldest day is having the least weightage so even if uh, 250 days back or 240 days back we had a very big negative return the impact of that in the computation of the var is much limited whereas if the recent data has very heavy negative value it will add very significantly to the var calculation so that is how we can use the age weighted simulation approach to compute our var and expected shortfall means we are not giving equal importance to all the 200 odd days of data 
we are slowly reducing the importance uh, of the oldest uh, data and giving more weightage to the latest data for the computation of var so even if there was an extreme event in the past n periods its impact on the computation of the var will keep going down with the passage of time this is what uh, i have shown as a part of our example so this is how we use age weighted historical simulation approach to compute the var then we are also moving ahead with the computation of the volatility weighted historical simulation now what this volatility weighted approach uh, says is let's say if this is the data right now i am not uh, bothered much about uh, the age if this is the data what it is uh, saying is probably the volatility of the data is not stable across the volatility might be uh, changing uh, with time so if at all my current volatility is much lesser using even the historical uh, data very old data to compute the var might result in a very high var though my uh, current volatility levels are much lesser i might end up computing a very high var or even vice versa so this method actually focuses on giving the weights based on the volatility of the current time period rather than going with the age so if the current volatility is much lesser the past data has to be adjusted to reflect the current volatility level so what it is uh, saying is you use for some mechanism to compute the volatilities of each of the days using either the garsh or ewma kind of approaches right i can use uh, the garsh or an ewma kind of uh, approach to compute the volatility for each of the periods whatever is the mechanism that i am using just to demonstrate it i don't want to get into the usage of the garsh model here but i'll take different volatilities for different periods just to show the demonstration part so if i am assuming the standard deviations what i'll do uh, for the standard deviations is i'll take uh, the standard deviation uh, directly of uh, this to this a straight forward uh, usage is what i'll go with right for the first day probably not applicable but from here onwards let's say these are the standard deviation sometimes up sometimes down i'm simply uh, taking the standard deviation of the data over all these days so what we are seeing is for some periods the standard deviations are higher in some periods they are lesser increasing decreasing all such kind of things we are noticing in this data now what this i mean don't uh, worry about the method that i have used but uh, for your understanding what i can simply uh, suggest is go with the standard computation of the standard deviation using the garsh method or ewma or any such kind of uh, an approach right assuming that you have used some of those uh, approaches to compute the standard deviation and let's say these are the standard deviations what this method says is you do the adjusted returns for each of the days you do the adjusted returns by multiplying uh, the return of that particular day with the current volatility of the asset and divided by the volatility of the asset on that particular day what is the current volatility of the asset this is the current volatility of the asset divided by the volatility of the asset on that particular date divided by the volatility of the asset on that particular date now you are adjusting the returns so these are the returns which are computed first one probably i'll ignore it 
so you are computing uh, the returns in this particular uh, fashion now once these returns are computed probably you find out uh, the 1% uh, var to probably uh, as uh, the the third element or something like that you arrange the data out of this probably uh, the 2.5 or the third whatever is the element you can very well see that this is the 1% uh, var after the adjustment and probably uh, the 5% uh, var I can take uh, the 13th smallest or 12th smallest element in this particular which is coming out to around 2.75% so this is a better measure estimate of the var because sometimes what may happen is the volatilities could have either gone up or gone down recently compared to what the data was uh, 20, uh, 20, 250 days back or one year back so using that data to estimate the var today or expected shortfall today is not a better uh, measure of uh, computing them so that is where uh, this method suggests you adjust the uh, returns for each of the historical day which you have considered by multiplying it uh, with the current volatility and divide it by the volatility that is present on that particular day do the adjustment of the returns and once the returns are adjusted probably you can compute the var and the expected shortfall in the same way as we have done in the earlier uh, mechanisms or in the traditional approaches also so that way <coughs> we are taking into account the current day's volatility and reflecting the risk more and reflecting the risk weighted uh, return more based on the current uh, fluctuation levels of the prices the same logic when we are applying it to a portfolio instead of taking uh, the uh, instead of taking uh, the volatilities of each of the individual securities separately apart from that we are also considering the correlation between the pair of securities especially in a portfolio probably uh, uh, when we are uh, computing the correlation long time back it used to be something but current days correlation is something else so adjust the returns of the portfolio of each of these days by multiplying it with the current days correlation and divide it by the correlation that was existing on that particular day so again the same uh, logic right when we are using it uh, with respect to a portfolio the correlation apart from uh, the volatility of uh, based uh, weightage the correlation based weightage also adds a lot of uh, 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 adds a lot of recency to the data so the modified correlation is also taken into uh, consideration along with their individual uh, volatilities to estimate the var and the expected shortfall for the portfolio and one more approach that has been uh, discussed here is the filtered historical simulation approach this is slightly a more complicated kind of an uh, approach but at the same time it is more comprehensive because it uses your uh, volatility estimation models like uh, GARSH and DWMA and along with that it also combines the historical simulation all we are doing is for each day you compute the volatility just like what we have uh, done using uh, uh, the, the volatility adjusted uh, approach you compute the volatility using GARSH or EWMA or any such kind of a model for each of the historical days. Then normalize it by dividing by the realized returns on that day. So you normalize the volatility. If at all these are the volatilities for each of the days, you normalize uh, the volatilities by dividing it by the corresponding returns so these are the returns that are generated 
after the normalization of the corresponding volatility so that is what is the normalization you forecast the volatility for each of the days normalize it by dividing by the realized returns and based on those set of uh, uh, then use the bootstrapping approach use the bootstrapping uh, approach to generate the returns based on the current volatility levels so you normalize the returns use the bootstrapping approach uh, let's say to pull out some 100 values which are reflecting the current volatility levels so basically uh, if these are the adjusted uh, returns wherein we have taken the volatility of that particular day so if this was the volatility this was the return now as of the current volatility what could have been the return for the same thing if this was the volatility this was the return if the volatility had been the current day's volatility what would have been the return so this is the return now what it says is from these set of returns you use the bootstrapping you take some 100 elements out out of these adjusted returns and based on them you compute the var for each set of items and after that you compute the var uh, you compute the average of all those vars and say that this is the var for this entire Uh, for uh, this is the var for this uh, particular period so we are combining both the bootstrapping uh, historical simulation approach as well as the conditional volatility approach to finally uh, find out the var or the expected uh, shortfall using this filtered historical simulation method so it can uh, <coughs> it can even result in a var which is higher than the historical period also probably in this case let's say if i am looking at uh, the most minimum most value right it's around 4.67 whereas the actual minimum most value from our data from our actual data it was only 4.0 which is an indication that 4.67 when it has occurred it has occurred during the period i mean even it was 4 uh, or even it was less than 4 it has occurred during the period where the volatility was much much lesser but if the current volatility level was there probably this would have been equivalent to the extent of 4.67 so i am more worried about the var which is reflecting a higher value because the current volatility levels are much higher rather than my system saying the volatility is only around 4.08 the var is only around 4.08% so that way this is much more robust and much more comprehensive because there is a possibility that it can result in a very high var than what was actually observed during the historical uh, period which means the losses outside the historical range also can be done quite effectively the same logic can be extended uh, to a portfolio and uh, even the large portfolio var also can be computed quite effectively using this approach so just to uh, summarize whatever is the non parametric uh, approach that we are uh, using to estimate the value at uh, risk there are certain advantages and disadvantages packaged into it so any non parametric uh, approach it is easy to compute once we have a spreadsheet we have tried uh, doing uh, the age weighted correlation uh, sorry uh, the volatility weighted or even filtered simulation kind of uh, approaches using a simple spreadsheet calculation we don't need to really bother about uh, the distribution uh, of the underlying data so we don't need to really check out for the skewness cutoffs 
uh, and any other uh, such kind of parameters associated with the distribution. So, you do not need to do any kind of adjustments to the data to bring out normality in it, no removal of outliers, nothing such kind of uh, adjustments need to be done to the data. So, any kind of complex analysis can be done quite comfortably. But how good is the historical data? We is the historical uh, data, the patterns of the historical data can they be applicable to the current, right? Because it does not consider the changes in economy, it does not consider any other causes, it just assumes the patterns of the historical are reflected to the future. So, there is nothing more than that assumption. So, if there were uh, huge changes between the, the, the huge changes in the economy or any other aspects between uh, the time the data has been considered and the current, then probably uh, this model may not work uh, comfortably. And uh, if the volatilities have changed uh, drastically, then probably uh, the estimates of VAR and expected shortfall would be widely different uh, from what the other approaches uh, typically uh, go with and uh, there is a possibility that uh, your model may generate a maximum loss than what uh, the historical data has shown sometimes it's an advantage but the same can turn out into a disadvantage so if you have to use historical simulation more and more appropriately it suggests that your sample size should be very, very large so that all kinds of possibilities are considered into the approach and we don't need to really, uh, uh, we don't need to really uh, search around for the parameters or any further calculations on the same. Alright, so uh, 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 this particular uh, chapter has focused primarily uh, towards the non-parametric uh, approaches of uh, computation of uh, value at uh, risk and how we can uh, improvise the calculations of value at uh, risk using uh, the weighings based on age or volatility or correlation or for that matter any kind of uh, combinations of volatility with historical simulation bootstrapped historical simulation approach all these things it is better that you uh, practice uh, on by taking some kind of a data, making the adjustments to the data and computation of the value at risk. If you have any further queries regarding any of these aspects, you can very well get in touch with me by giving me a call on 9848012123 or you can even send in an email at vamsidhar at pacegurus com. Thanks a lot uh, for listening to this uh, session. Thank you very much.